Hello everyone. Today in our series of Docplexus KOL interviews, we have with us eminent gynecological oncologist Dr. Nija Bhatla. Dr. Nija Bhatla is a professor at AIMS OB-GYN department. She is the chairperson of FIGO committee for gynecological oncology. She is the founder president of Asia Oceanic Research Organization on Genital Infection and Neoplasia. Thank you Dr. Bhatla for speaking with us today. Dr. Bhatla, you are one of the pioneers in the management of cervical cancer treatment in India. So could you please elaborate on the prevalence of this uh, of the on the prevalence of cervical cancer in India and how it ranks among other cancers? So cervical cancer is really one of the most common cancers among Indian women. It is the number 2 cancer in India among the women and it's about 130,000 new cases we have every year and about 67,000 women dying of it which is really more than the number of women who die of maternal mortality. And uh, so it's an extremely important condition, even more so because it is a preventable one. So do you think there is a need for stronger awareness program? Yes, it's unfortunate that in India people are not aware about it. Mm -hmm. It's perhaps it doesn't get talked about as much as breast cancer does, for example. So people don't really know that it can be prevented by a program of screening which is what they've done in the West. They have this call recall programs and women go back every three years to get their pap smears done. And because it has a long precancerous phase, so it can get diagnosed uh, in a stage before the cancer actually develops and it can get treated. And that is how they have managed to reduce the mortality by about 70%. But in India, women don't know about this, so they just don't go or they are in denial and think it won't happen to them. And so they don't go. And the government has not been able to set up a proper screening uh, program because PAP is expensive. And now we know that we have something which is a, a cheaper alternative, which is called EIA, where you just have an inspection, the vinegar test. And the government is now trying to put that in place in all the states. So what are the referral conditions for general practitioners for the screening of cervical cancer in, in India? Which screening actually means that you do it to everyone. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's something which you do not just for symptomatic women or high risk women, but something which goes across the board, every woman who should get it done at least after the age of 30 years. The Western guidelines say 21. But we say at least after the age of 30 years, so that simpler changes which might reverse on their own will be done away with by then, but the more severe grades of uh, pre-cancer can get detected and treated in time. So what is the present status of HPV vaccination implementation? HPV vaccine has been licensed in India since 2009 and it has been available in the market. There was an unfortunate situation where there were some girls who had received vaccines several months earlier who died of unrelated conditions, which was blown up a little bit out of proportion, I think, because really the inquiry committee never found any link between those. And it's a vaccine where about 300 million doses now have been administered worldwide and its safety has been proved enormously. So it's actually as safe as taking a tetanus toxoid and everybody should be convinced on that point now, I think. There's enough safety data to say it doesn't cause anything serious that doesn't happen in the general population at the same rate. So it's a safe vaccine. It is being taken up by some people, but not as much as it should, partly because of the expense, partly because of the lack of awareness. But the good news now is that we have data which is largely generated also from an Indian study that shows that you can give two doses if the girls are under 15 years of age with the same results. So two doses at a six month interval is sufficient if the girl is aged under 15 and if she is not immunosuppressed like HIV or transplant cases or something like that. So what are the current roadblocks that the physicians are facing today with respect to HPV vaccination? So I think one thing is that people are not aware. So if people are asking for it, it's very easy to supply it. So since they're not aware, they're not asking for it. Physicians and gynecologists in particular do not have time to do the counseling. They're so busy taking care of the curative 
they don't have time for preventive which is really sad because they say an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure it really applies in this case where you could do away with all the morbidity mortality expense and all that of treating for treating cancers later on so is there any recommendation would you would like to make to the physicians or gynecological oncologist so i think it's really really important uh, i say it's like uh, you have csr like corporate social responsibility this is your cancer screening responsibility i think every physician must ask themselves every gynecologist must ask themselves how many women did i advise prevention to how many girls did i advise vaccination to i think this is part of something we should have from within that this is part of our responsibility now and every girl should be vaccinated before she reaches the age of 15 for sure and every woman should go for screening at least every 5 years with the pap and hpv beginning at 30 35 and that will take care of the majority of our problems dr bhatna one last question in your opinion uh, can an online plot platform like doplexis help in educating physicians about the recent advances in gynecological oncology yes i'm sure there's a lot of scope for that and a lot of need for that too because medicine the only constant is change so there's always something new that's coming up there's always some new um, molecules new techniques new uh, new guidelines so it's really important for people to stay up to date and this is an excellent method to do it as well thank you so much for your valuable time thank you to stay updated on our latest scale videos and interviews please follow us on twitter like us on our facebook page and subscribe on our youtube channel happy doc flexing